Hi, this video is about the mist coolant system that I built about a year ago. I'll leave you a card in the description. It would be beneficial to watch it if you also want to build one. It contains more detailed information about the fittings that I used. Now, here I have the prototype that I made a while back and you are going to see it later on today in the video how it works uh, when I build the final version. That is this one right here. And you can also get a measured drawing and a detailed component list on my web page. I'll leave you a link in the description. All right, let's get going. So this design is going to address two shortfalls of the commercial available systems. One, the main feature is it eliminates the needle valve. That needle valve gives me always trouble and even higher quality, if you add one that is like from Bosch or so, the problem will be that initially you don't get the amount of fluid out that you want and you always have to adjust it. Number two is you are going to get a holder that has one hinge point and a magnetic foot. And I think that that's a little bit of a afterthought. This lock line right here acts as the air supply and at the same time also gives us good adjustability and it is cheaper than one of those um, dial indicator holders that you see like a Noga arm or so. So I think that's actually a really nice working system. You will see the prototype that I built throughout this video. Okay, let me route you through the components for this project. This is a tank that I've been using for the past year. It has a manual on off valve and honestly, I don't like that a whole lot. I have to babysit it all the time. So I'm gonna install a solenoid valve, 24 volts. This is from Talon's Pneumatic, uh, was $16 off Amazon. All components are bought on Amazon, by the way. This is the heart of the system. That is the peristaltic pump. Now, if you choose a pump, make sure that you are going to get a low flow pump. This one here is rated at 110 milliliters per minute, and that's plenty. It has a NEMA 17 motor, and it's a 24 volt pump. This one cost $42. Again, the brand is Camor. The motor controller will be needed because we have a stepper on here. So to make the stepper go, we need a motor controller to generate a pulse width modulated signal, PWM. On off and RPM control right here, 24 volts in step direction and um, enable out $14. Then we need a driver, well, basically you also know the word amplifier, and that is that little guy right here. It's a DRV8825. It is a really small chip and but powerful. And it has a pot right here. That pot is for the overcurrent control right there. And um, if your pump is not running in the beginning, turn that pot, it might be down all the way. and um, that might be a reason why it's not working. Now, I also have an expansion board right here. The expansion board we need so that we can just simply set the chip in right here and it will provide us 24 volt in, the plug for the motor. And then on this side, we will put have to put up five volts. I didn't know that. I thought it has onboard five volt power supply for the chip, it does not. So in addition to the expansion board, which by the way was $9, I bought this DC to DC converter, 24 volt in, five volt out, but it's adjustable. So that's gonna live right here. We're gonna pick 24 volt from here and then five volt out to this plug. Now, before you turn the system on, make sure you use a voltmeter and you turn the dial down the pot right here down to, to five volt. Otherwise you turn it on and you burn up the ship right away. Okay. For the price of this, this one comes, I think six of them, $10 or so. They are relatively cheap. Now, next we need some pneumatic components. This is some three millimeter and six millimeter hose. I like urethane hose, polyurethane hose because it doesn't kink. This is also from Talon's pneumatic and it comes with a whole set of fittings, push to connect fittings, $16 a set. And then we need a fitting to mount the fluid hook up into the aluminum block for our, well, 
our own Fogbuster. And this one has, that you see here, has an NPT, 1 8 inch NPT thread right here. And I don't like it because I think it's too big. Um, in the final version, I changed that to use an M5 to three millimeter push connect and that is smaller and I think it's gonna look so much better. Okay, that is it. These are all the components, I think. So when I initially designed this project, I didn't want to use an Arduino. Also, I did not want you to solder any components and that five volt power supply, dang it. I didn't know that the breakout board doesn't provide that. I know the chip has five volt on board, but uh, I don't think it's easily accessed using that breakout board. Now, if you are in electronics and you know about a better system to drive that stepper motor, would you please leave a comment so that other viewers can improve. And also I will copy that onto my components list that uh, you possibly can download. Okay, that is it for this video and I catch you next time. There is something about a DRO that I bought to improve the access accuracy and small teaser, catch you next time.